I have five dark horses to win the Big Ten football title this year outside of Oregon and Ohio State. Does your team make the list? Lockdown Big Ten starts right now. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman, coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and play-by-play announcer. And I want to thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. All right, dark horse sleepers to win the title this year. Plus some big recruiting news throughout the Big Ten. A couple of schools getting my attention here. I'll share them with you, plus our weekend classics. But as we get closer to the start of the season, the predictions about who will win what game and who will make it to the playoffs will continue to pile up. That includes this podcast as well. In fact, we are already on the record thinking that it will be Ohio State and Oregon for the Big Ten championship. And both teams, win or lose, will be in the expanded college football playoffs. The question is, who will join them? Better yet, who can beat them? Who else can win the Big Ten this year? Been thinking about that a lot lately. Who's a dark horse that can can take the lead this year? Let's explore some of the teams. I have five that I want to talk to you about right here. First of all, for the purpose of this exercise, let's define a dark horse that we can all agree on. Okay, today's definition Maybe different from yours. But I think right now, as of June, things could change. Oregon and Ohio State, they're above everybody else right now. So my definition of a dark horse is just about everybody else in the conference. I'm not talking about long shots. I'm not talking about underdogs here. I'm talking about anybody else that can have an outside shot, big or small, to win the Big Ten. So here are my five teams in no particular order. Let's start with Michigan. We spent a lot of time earlier this week. In fact, go back and check them out. Our podcasts are always there for you to watch. uh, Lockdown Big Ten. Talking about Sharon Moore. How he's excited about this football team in Ann Arbor. 18 kids were drafted by the NFL, and a handful of others were undrafted signees. That's a lot of talent to lose in one year and then still expect to be decent the next year. One thing about Michigan is they're very deep and they're very talented. They were last year, and they're going to be again this year. I'll give you one example. When Zach Zinner went down at the end of the season, he was their best and most experienced offensive lineman. And when he went down, there was a senior and a grad student ready to jump up and replace him. They don't replace people with like freshmen. They are deep. Their depth chart is serious. Always has been. This year's offensive line is going to be completely new. But they're all going to be upperclassmen and guys with experience and guys with size that are grown men now. No youngsters out of high school a year or two and just stepping up. This is uh, is going to be a beefy offensive line. It's going to have different names on it this year. This is just one example. They're like this across the board at most other positions. So uh, I think things are not all that bad at Michigan this year. And with the coaching change after Jim Harbaugh left, you know, most of these guys stayed. A lot of times when you have a coaching change, guys will leave. But they bought into the Michigan culture, and they worked really long and hard to get where they're at. They've been waiting and paying their dues, and they didn't want to pass up this opportunity. So here they come. The question would be moving forward, could Sharon Moore keep it going You know, now that Harbaugh's gone? That's where you'll find, I, is there a drop-off in year two or year three of Sharon Moore? But we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about this year, 2024. So these guys didn't want this opportunity to pass. They're stepping in. It's their turn. Speaking of passing, that's the biggest question for Michigan. Who's playing quarterback this year? Whoever gets the starting job, whether it's Alex Orgy or Jane Denegal or Jack Tuttle or Davis Warren, we believe that Michigan will go as far as that position takes them. And if it's better than expected, after trying to replace J.J. McCarthy, then look out the rest of the Big Ten. All right? now. How about Lincoln Riley's USC Trojans? They make their debut in the Big Ten. All offense and no defense, right? 
That's uh, that could lead to some problems in the Big Ten with that kind of style. Whether Lincoln Riley was at Oklahoma or now at Southern Cal, it's the signature of his teams. It's what they are. But the Trojans have tried to beef up their defense a little bit with some portal talent, and they have a new defensive coordinator. And if the defense improves just a little bit, then we can have a conversation about the Trojans. They get their first real test right out of the box with LSU in their season opener. So we're going to see what they are before they even get into Big Ten play. And we'll also get to see if quarterback Miller Moss is the real deal or is he a one-trick pony after stepping in for former Heisman Trophy winner and the top pick of the NFL draft, Caleb Williams, in the Holiday Bowl, and all he did was throw six touchdowns. We all saw that and went, wow. <laughs> they got a transition plan at quarterback. So it uh, could be a fun year for Southern Cal this year. Put them on our list. What about Illinois? You're going, what, Craig? What are you talking about? They weren't that good last year. Brett Bielema's team was five and seven. I know they were five and seven, but they were a talented five and seven. They were exciting five and seven. They were the cardiac kids. They won a bunch of close games. They lost a bunch of close games. You know, those losses, they lost to Toledo by two. They lost, and that Toledo team turned out to be pretty decent. They lost to a ranked Kansas team by 11. They lost to Nebraska 20 to seven. They lost to Wisconsin by four. They lost to a ranked Iowa team by two. Remember, that was that crazy low 15 to 13 game. And they lost to Northwestern, which was a good team last year. They won eight games by two points. So quick recap here. If I thumb through some of these games, that was three losses by two points and another one by four to Wisconsin. They win those games. Suddenly, it's a nine and three season for Brett Bielema, right? Uh, plus, I think, out of all the returning quarterbacks coming back in the Big Ten, I'm not including the new schools coming in or transfer portal kids, kids that were on Big Ten teams last year in the Big Ten coming back. I think their quarterback, Luke Altmaier, is the best returning quarterback in the league. You know, Drew Allard was a little disappointing over Penn State. I think Luke Altmaier is a good quarterback with another year under his belt. Maybe Illinois. Let's discuss Iowa for just a second here. Look, it may be more the same as last year. No offense and a lot of defense. In fact, it's probably going to be. Uh, in fact, we are going to talk about Iowa tomorrow. We're going to take a closer look at the Iowa offense and did they really improve uh, going into this year in tomorrow's Lockdown Big Ten podcast. So don't miss it. Um, so we'll discuss that. Now, remember, last year when I took over this this podcast channel, one of the first ones I did was on Iowa football. And I suggested that they could win somewhere between nine and 11 games. I was looking at their team. I was looking at their schedule. And a lot of you laughed at me when I said they could win nine, uh, nine, maybe 10, maybe 11 games. Guess what? They won 10 and they got to the big 10 championship game. So I'm not, I don't know that they're going to do that this year or not. I, but I won't count them out just yet. Um, it's Iowa. You just, you just can't. So, um, we do recognize that they will not benefit from being in the lesser West, uh, West division. Like we had, got rid of divisions this year, so they won't be helped by that. That won't be a path to a big 10 title game that way. They're going to have to win their way in. But anyway, we'll talk more about them tomorrow. And then there's the biggest sleeper or dark horse, if you will. And that's Nebraska. I always enjoy talking about Nebraska because I'm fascinated by them this year and Matt Rule. Now, do I think they're a really good team? Yeah, actually, I do. Uh, they they had turnovers and silly mistakes and bad quarterback play last year. Take care of those two things. They're going to win a lot more games. Do I think they can win the Big Ten in 2024? Probably not. Probably not. Only because no matter how excited I am to see Dylan Rayola play quarterback as i sit here today i do not think that a true freshman can just step in at quarterback and win the big 10 i just don't I think a lot of you will agree with me on that but it doesn't mean we can't wait to see this kid play we also recognize that matt rule thinks it's important to get off to a quick start this season and let's face it uh, it's a pretty tall task again with such a young quarterback there's gonna be a learning curve it's gonna need a few games to get warmed up sometimes you lose those games a lot of times you lose those games but best case scenario, looked at the Nebraska schedule. It's pretty favorable early on. And if they can get by Coach Prime and Dion in Colorado in week two, it is possible. They could. They could 
could be seven and zero or six and one going into that Ohio State game. Maybe you want me to be more reasonable, five and two. That's still pretty good. And then after the Ohio State game, they got UCLA, who's very beatable this year. I'm just saying, Nebraska can rack up some wins this year. So that's it for my dark horse list of teams right now in the Big Ten to keep an eye on. Um, there's a couple more I'll do for honorable mention. I want to see more out of them first. And I'm talking about Washington, who's a completely revamped team, but there, there's some talent coming back too. So, I'm, but I want to see more here and uh, Wisconsin team. I'm curious, Luke fickle now year two. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes there with Wisconsin. Of course, they got Van Dyke at quarterback as well to transfer out of Miami. What do you guys think? Love to hear from you. Uh, you can hit us up. Don't forget on Twitter at talk big 10. Uh, also you can, uh, hit us up on YouTube for some comments there. We always check those out and, um, don't forget our website, talk big 10, number 10.com. By the way, if you like what you see here or hear here, subscribe, it's free. It's a click of a button and that's it. No other information is required. And then we're in our big 10 club together forever. Subscribe and follow Locked On Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. The Huskers have recruited a giant. I'll explain that. And a running back, too. And Greg Schiano is tearing it up. They might have a top 10 class there at Rutgers this year. I know. I know. Surprising. Plus, we got a list of the uh, playoff times and networks and all that for the college football playoffs, the expanded playoffs. If you're on the East Coast, you're going to like some of these kickoff times. So we'll do all of that. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Big Ten. Game time. Love to talk about game time. Get the game time app and get tickets like that to anything to anything. Well, let's talk about the NBA Finals because that's a thing now. You want to go? I've been to NBA Finals before. It's pretty cool. You can go too. Just get your game time app, get your tickets, and you'll be good to go. They make getting NBA Finals tickets faster and easier. And prices on a game time app, they actually tend to go down the closer it is to tip off. They got killer last-minute deals, uh, all-in prices, views from your seat you're about to buy right there on your phone before you hit Click it and buy the, buy the ticket. Uh, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. You got great deals. They're last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports. And in addition to sports, they also have concerts, comedy, theater, anything that needs a ticket, you can get with the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets on Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every day. Tell a friend about us, especially you everydayers out there. Meanwhile, subscribe, and uh, that's on YouTube there, and you can share and follow and like Locked On Big Ten, your team, every day. And uh, don't forget to check out our website, talkbig10.com. That's talkbig10number10.com. All right, offensive linemen, they're getting bigger and bigger every year. And Matt Rule may have found a diamond in the rough for Nebraska. Maybe. His name is David Hopkin. He's 6'7". He's a German athlete. Hasn't played organized football in two years. He's not ready to play D1 football right now. But Rule's been watching him at a couple of camps. I think they were in Texas. I know one of them was in Houston. And right after that, he offered him a scholarship on the spot. Nice little project there for Matt Rule. Not a five-star, not a three-star. Heck, he's a zero-star. Not on anybody's radar. Getting zero attention out there. Zero Division I scholarship offers. But Matt Rule says, you want to come to Nebraska? Got a spot for you. He looks the part. Got the six-seven size, the seven-foot wingspan, nine-foot-four broad jump. Stay tuned on this one. Again, his name is David Hopkin. 
And Matt Rule's not done, of course. Been very busy because the Huskers just got a commit from four-star running back, Jamarian Parker. He's not as big as the offensive line. He's six foot. He's from St. Louis, Missouri. Other schools interested in him? Alabama, Colorado, Missouri, Kansas. Must be pretty good. He's the second highest ranked Husker recruit for the class of 2025. Now, here's the good stuff. In high school last year, he rushed for 1,207 yards on 101 carries. Quick math, that's like 12 yards a carry. Uh, he also scored 17 touchdowns, 13 on the ground. Maybe he'll be running behind that 6'7 German kid I just told you about. And more recruiting news. Greg Schiano. I'm going to talk about Rutgers here for a minute. Uh, they've been they've been very, very busy over there. They had uh, official visits this past weekend. He got 10 commitments on the spot. Closed them right there. Didn't even let him go home and go to other, other schools. Just got them done. Total of 18 now for this class. All 18 are three stars. Okay. No, they're not five stars, not four, but they're all they're all pretty good. And according to one ranking service, Rutgers has a top 10 recruiting class now because of this. It's the third best behind Ohio State and USC in the Big Ten. Pretty good company. Not bad. That's a lot of recruiting talk right there. Anytime we do, we like to give a shout out to our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right. We have the actual broadcast times and networks for the expanded 12-team college football playoff. Let me run them down for you. This is how it's gonna, this is how it's gonna pan out. The first round, we'll have four games, eight teams. Those will be on, on campus now. No neutral sites unless the school wants to move it to a neutral site. Right. Let's say you're uh your school that makes it. This is totally hypothetical. Let's say you're uh Say you're Indiana or Purdue and you don't want to play at home because you can sell more tickets at Lucas Oil. You'll have that option. I'm just using that to paint a picture. That's it's not going to happen. All right. But otherwise, they'll be at uh, at home uh, home football stadiums. All right. And they start Friday, December 20th. One game on that Friday night. It's 8.30, ABC and ESPN. Then three more. The three other games are Saturday, December 21st. First day of winter. Noon and 4 o'clock Eastern time. That's a doubleheader on TNT. Remember, TNT is taking some of this load from ESPN. They've kind of farmed it out. Then they come back to ABC and ESPN for the Saturday night game on the 21st at 8 p.m. So those are those are the first four games with eight of the 12 teams. Other, the other four get buys. The following weekend, we got the quarterfinals. Now, these sites, we're going to use bowl games for these. So Tuesday, December 31st, New Year's Eve. Fiesta Bowl, 7.30 ESPN. Then the other three games will be on January 1, Wednesday, January 1st. Peach Bowl, 1 o'clock Eastern, ESPN. Rose Bowl, traditional, 5 p.m. Eastern time, ESPN. Sugar Bowl, 8.45, a little late there, especially if you're up partying the night before, 8.45 Eastern on ESPN. That gets us down to the Final Four for the college football playoff. And the semifinals will be one per night. It's not going to be a doubleheader, which is kind of good. Thursday, January 9th, 7.30 Eastern time. How about that kickoff time on a work night? 7.30 ESPN, the Orange Bowl. Then the next night, Friday night, January 10th, the Cotton Bowl on ESPN, 7.30. And then on um, Monday, January 20th in Atlanta, 7:30 ESPN, the national championship. And if I'm if I think I'm correct here on January 20th, that's probably a day off for many of It's Martin Luther King Day. So 7:30, you got a day off, 7:30 kickoff for the national championship. Good to go. Those are all the kickoff times uh as we uh as we look at all those moving forward. Speaking of watching TV, if you watch Fox Sports, FS1, ESPN, and the talking heads all day. And you got to turn down the volume sometimes because it's just talking over each other and screaming. If you're loud, you're the more loud you are, the more correct you are. That's how that's how they do that. Turn all that down. 
Try out our friends at Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What we like to do on Thursdays, we like to take a look at the weekend coming up on the Big Ten Network, Big Ten Classics and Live Action. Mostly classics now because we're winding down the old sports calendar. We'll have that next. Some exciting stuff to watch. It's all coming up right here on the Locked On Big Ten. All right, let's get to it here. Well, let's take a look at the weekend schedule for uh, the Big Ten Network. We're going to highlight some. We're not going to go over the whole thing. Some highlights for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday coming up. It's too hot outside. Go ahead and watch some uh, good old classic uh, classic TV on, on the Big Ten Network. All right, we're going to put it up on full screen. If you're audio only, I will describe this to the best of my ability moving here. Uh, we'll start it off on Friday, June 7th. You know, if you like Purdue, you might as well just sit in front of the Big Ten Network uh, all day on Friday. Pick it up at 6 o'clock Eastern time. Getting ready for your Friday night, Purdue. A basketball classic, Purdue at Illinois. That is from uh, this year, early March. Zach Eady, 28 points. Fletcher Lawyer, 16. Helped the third-ranked Boilermakers beat the 12th-ranked Fighting Illini 77-71 to win the Big Ten regular season final. That th Those were the two best teams in the Big Ten this, this year, and that game clinched it for Purdue. Then at 7 o'clock, another Purdue basketball classic, their Sweet 16 performance against Gonzaga uh, from this year's tournament. And uh, Zach Eady with that one, 27 points and 14 rebounds as the top seeded Boilers beat the fifth seeded Bulldogs advanced to the lead eight eighty to 68 was the final score there. And we're just going to keep the theme going here as they kept going in March. Another Purdue basketball classic, the elite eight Purdue versus Tennessee in late March. You guessed it. Zach Eady, a career high 40 points and 16 rebounds to lead the Boilermakers to a 72 66 win over two seed. Tennessee to advance to the final four and at nine o'clock the final four another Purdue basketball classic as they took on North Carolina State and overachieving T when they were what 11 seed that made it the final four Zach Eady 20 points Lance Jones 14 top seeded Boilermakers 163 50 in that one so that is your Friday night action if you like Purdue meanwhile other stuff. Saturday, let's pick up the action at 2.30 Eastern time. A Big Ten football in 60 classic. They edit down into 60 minutes, snap by snap. Wisconsin at Minnesota. This is from this past season in November. Braylon Allen rushing for 165 yards and two touchdowns to lead the Badgers to a 28-14 win over the Golden Gophers and take back Paul Bunyan's axe. 2.30. At 3.30, another Big Ten football in 60. Wisconsin at Illinois from October, more Braden Locke. He passed for uh, 240 yards and two touchdowns, including the game-winning touchdown pass uh, late in the fourth quarter to lead the Badgers to a 25-21 win over the Fighting Illini. So uh, that's some of your Saturday action. We'll flip the page here. There's some more. Pick it up at 4.30, another Big Ten football in 60, Nebraska at Wisconsin from November. Braylon Allen. Scoring a couple of touchdowns, including the game-winning touchdown to help the Badgers defeat the Cornhuskers 24-17 in overtime. That was a great game. Really, really was. At 5.30, the big moment, Ben Bruss half-court shot. Uh, you can hear from him and Coach Bo Ryan as they take a look back at his dramatic half-court shot for Wisconsin to set the game into overtime uh and in their uh victory over michigan back in 2013 then at six o'clock uh and seven o'clock a couple of back-to-back -back wisconsin basketball classics the six o'clock it's marquette at wisconsin from uh december max klesman 21 points helped the badgers upset the third ranked golden eagles 75 to 64 and at seven o'clock another max klesman uh, uh game where he hit the game-winning shot with 4.8 seconds to go to lead the fifth seeded Badgers uh, to take down the top seeded Boilermakers 76 75 in overtime in the Big Ten tournament. That was on uh, March 16th. Uh, and then we take a look at Sunday. We'll pick it up at uh, 2 30. It is an Ohio State basketball classic, Purdue at Ohio State. 
from February. Bruce Thornton scoring 22 points, and Jameson Battle had 19 to help the Buckeyes upset the second ranked Boilermakers, 73 to 69. And let's see, then at 5.30. We got an Ohio State basketball classic. This is women's. This was a great game. This was on national TV. Big ratings on this one. Iowa, of course, Caitlin Clark at Ohio State in uh, late January. Cody McMahon had 33 points and 12 rebounds to help the Buckeyes to a 192 overtime victory over Caitlin Clark. They were ranked second in the nation at that time. The Hawkeyes were. That was the game where they stormed the court and uh, Caitlin Clark got knocked down. She began getting knocked down a lot lately. People are coming after her. Um, but she's going to be great. She's going to be just fine. Seven o'clock, Big Ten football, 60 Penn State at Ohio State from last October. Marvin Harrison Jr., 11 catches, 162 yards, and a late touchdown as the third ranked Buckeyes. Uh, ended up beating the seventh ranked Nittany Lions 20 to 12. And at eight o'clock, Keisha missed it back in April. Big Ten spring football, Ohio State and their spring games. So a lot of interesting stuff. Basketball and football on the Big Ten Network coming up this weekend that you want to check out. We always like to point out the classics and sometimes some live action, but they're calling Big Ten Classics here on Thursday. That's what we do. Hope you enjoy that, and I uh, hope you look forward to some of that stuff as well, and hope you look forward to tomorrow's podcast as well. We're going to uh, take a look. Is, is Iowa's offense any better than last year or not? That's one of the things we're going to discuss. In the meantime, many ways for you to interact with us. You can hit us up at Twitter, X, at TalkBig10, number 10. Our website, the crawl on the bottom, you see it, TalkBig10number10.com. All of our podcasts go there, both chronological order and by school. Get yourself some merchandise there as well and other information. Plus, don't forget comments on YouTube. Those are always fun. No matter what you do, be sure to subscribe. And follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it comes available each and every day. Feel free to catch another episode or two after this one. And don't forget our friends at uh, Lockdown Sports Today. They're here for you 24-7. In fact, this podcast is on there from time to time as well. That'll do it, man. I had a great time. As always, thank you for joining us. Tell your friends about us. If you have some Big Ten friends or alum, let them know about us. Word of mouth really helps. I'm sure they would enjoy it. Uh, we love talking Big Ten stuff. I'm sure they would love hearing it. So uh, word of mouth is the key there. And I already can't wait till we talk again next time tomorrow. Make an appointment. Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. Thanks for checking us out. We'll see you tomorrow.